Good to see everyone again. H Happy New Year. Obviously, the first time we're getting together since everything's been rolling and going here. Um, you know, fun day, exciting day. Uh, a little bit of the excitement, I guess, of this day has been taken out of the room with the early signing period and everything. But happy to announce Tyler and Heath today, um, you know, kind of putting a, a close and a bow on the signing class um, for this 2024 cycle. Um, but overall, as we talked about in December, you know, really excited about the class, excited about the work that the staff had do has done to this point. And, and obviously, a lot of those guys that we talked about in December are here on campus and rolling and going with us. Um, so it's been great to you know have them here doing the work together and uh, excited to be off the road a little bit and to be around our team and to be around our guys and you know to start doing that work uh, this afternoon here in a little bit um, to, to be with them and spend more time with them. So be happy to answer any questions about where we're at and where we want to go here with this. When you took the job, what did you think were your biggest priorities in terms of the roster? Uh, making sure that with the trenches were right and making sure that we had enough speed and athleticism across the board. The, the game's evolved and you need to be able to play the game in space, right? And, and with our style of play and the way that we were changing, we wanted to add more length and speed offensively. Um, but as much change that has occurred, you still have to be able to win in the trenches. So, you know, I thought we've done a good job addressing a lot of those needs and we'll continue to, you know, develop those guys here in house now to maximize their capabilities and get the most out of them. Considering what you lost, transfer portal, graduation, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, only four or five offensive defensive linemen, is that all light numbers? Uh, for where we're at right now, we wanted to make sure that we were taking the right kids and not just getting the body to replace, you know, a, a player that left. So, you know, it's a very fluid situation, and we'll continue to assess the roster as we move forward with it all, and assess the the options that are out there for how we can shore up both fronts as we move forward. How many scholarships do you think you still have left for the next transfer portal? Uh, very, very fluid. Right, kind of depends on what happens with the roster movement that we have right now. But you know, there there might be a handful more of additions as we go forward with it all. Coach, big picture. Ten weeks ago, you introduced yourself, right. and you're here today with the signing day with all these players. Are, are you? Uh, were you expecting it to go as smoothly as it did, or did it not go <laughs> smoothly? You're kind of just. <laughs> Talk about the big picture since you got here to yeah. this day, how that's gone. Yeah, it's been good. I mean, I'm glad that it's appeared that it's been smooth, right, um, and, and that things have gone well. Um, the, the staff's done a tremendous job with the work that they have done. And we sat down, shoot, 10 weeks ago now and, and laid out a plan of how we wanted to attack this window of time so that we could maximize it. And again, with the families and the young men that we were able to add, felt like we hit on a lot of the needs that, that we saw that we needed to address. Obviously, this is a never-ending process, right? Like it, the, the two main pillars that are always going to be top of mind for us are building our culture and acquiring the right talent, both staff and players consistently year round as we do this, right? But for where we were 10 weeks ago, no one knew that I was going to be the head coach and no one knew who the coordinators were going to be and no one knew who the assistants were going to be and all those various factors, right? To find the right families, to find the right players that we believe are the right fit for the direction that we are going, right? And then blending them with the current roster, you know, it's an exciting time to, to be moving ahead together. Can you talk about uh, this class in particular? Any guys you can maybe single out that might be uh really impact guys immediately? Too early to tell right now. You know, I mean, excited about the, all the guys that we did sign. If we weren't excited about them, we wouldn't have brought them here, right? But some of the older, you know, transfer portal players that only have a season to play, right? We, we brought them here with a reason and a purpose, believing that they can add some values. You know, so a guy like Jude Wolf, you know, is a, a man, young man that has some significant playing time. And, you know, obviously, you know, losing a tight end and replacing that, we believe that he can do some really good things. Um, you know, Jay Sean Polk, another young man that has one year to play, um, is a guy that, you know, obviously has some familiarity with the system, as an explo explosive playmaker, adds value in teams, you know, bringing a guy like Tano back home, right? And, and being able to see some of the things that, that he's done. And again, having playing experience, and he's a little bit more, you know, in the early part of his track, right? But those are some guys just, Again, with production that they've done, kind of seeing them move around here a little bit, you know, even though we've just been in shorts and t-shirts, kind of just doing some things in PJs, you know, but you don't want to get too excited to buy anything too soon until the pads come on. You kind of have a real good assessment and a good evaluation of where the new pieces are going to fit, um, you know, and how it all works out day to day. Can you talk about uh, Bennett from Portland State and the Colorado State wide receiver Brown? Yeah. I mean, so both of them, size, length, um, playing experience, 
right? Um, you know, they, they are bigger frames with larger catch radiuses. Uh, Bennett, obviously, again, a little bit deeper in his journey, a little bit deeper in his track. He's a refined route runner. Um, LB, again, at the front end of his journey, again, uh, an LA kid that, you know, from day one, we want to make a priority of keeping the, the best of California home and here. Um, so obviously getting the opportunity to bring him back home and with his skill set, I mean, Sitting on the opposite sideline from him, you know, that early in the season last year as he was going back and forth, you know, it, it's kind of ironic how this all comes together and now he's on our roster, you know, collectively together. But again, I think both guys are explosive playmakers that now it's our job to educate them and teach them the systems and, you know, them to put the work in to, to earn some, some roles and some playing time here. There's all these player acquisition windows now compared to years ago. Does that make life more difficult, better, or how do you do it? I, I think it's just, it is different and it has evolved and you better stay ahead of the curve, right? So if you're not talking to other coaches, kind of what is best practice, how are you managing your roster? And if you're not learning at a rate greater than the change that is occurring, which I think has become an, a, a tremendous challenge in, in today's landscape, in today's space, um, you know, then it, it can get a little bit hairy. But again, we got a, a great staff room of great coaches that have various perspectives of all different levels. And so taking those best practices that we have done, applying those here, talking to other people, it, it, it's, it's not good or bad, in my opinion, right? Like. It, this is the reality that we're living in. So you better embrace it and you better evolve and you better learn again what are those best practices so that you can have a healthy, robust roster that has great competitive depth through it. And I think the staff's done a great job doing that here in these opportunities that we've had. Is it good though that maybe after spring practice, there's another window? So if things maybe didn't quite work out from one side or the other, there is an opportunity to find a bigger path? Yeah, I think change and finding the situation that is best for you is, is always a good thing. But I don't think that the greener pasture is always somewhere else, right? Like, I think that's the one thing that we can't lose sight of, that at the end of the day, this game that we all love has helped so many young men because it teaches great life lessons, right? And if we get into a place in a space where there's always an exit, when things get hard, you can run, as opposed to staying 10 tones down where you're at and watering the grass where you're at, that's how it becomes green, right? That's how you grow as an individual. You, you, you sit in the discomfort a little bit. You, you, you actively seek some productive discomfort, knowing that it is exactly what it, what it sounds to be, right? Like it's gonna be productive, but man, it's gonna be challenging. And by doing that and seeing some things through and having open and transparent relationships with the coaches of where you're at and, and speaking truth to one another, because the relationships that you have can withstand that truth, you know, that's where I think this game is, is, is at its best, right? Now, if you've worked that process and it's not meant to be where you are, then by all means, yeah, opportunity for everyone involved is, is what's best. It used to be people would stick it out because they didn't have any other options. How, how difficult is that discussion to really get through to somebody, hey, stick it out, let's see what it's doing? Again, I don't see it necessarily as difficult. I just see it as being truthful, you know? And again, that's one of the things that we've talked to our guys about ever since we've been back here in, in January. Like one of our non-negotiables is that we're gonna be truthful with one another. That I expect truth from the kids and I expect our staff to speak truth to the kids and I expect all of us to tell the truth about everything all the time. And so if we can have that constant dialogue of truthful conversation, then they, they don't become difficult conversations. Just say, like, we brought you here and, and, and I chose to be here to help everyone become the best version of themselves. And so I'm telling you the things that I believe that are going to help you become that. And if you want to hear that and you want to receive that, then let's go do that great work together. If after we have this open dialogue and we're truthful with one another, it's still not the best opportunity for you. If that's what you and your circle of influence believe, then by all means, again, I, I'm happy that you have the freedom to, to move and pivot and do the things that you want to do. But Again, like to think that it's going to be smooth and you know easy, life don't work that way, and, and this ain't going to be that way, right? Like, winning is anything but smooth and easy, right? So on an individual level, we got to be able to work through all the challenges and the opportunities and the adversities that come, because then there's going to be you know great growth that that stems from that day to day interaction. Kind of backtracking a little bit, you mentioned Tano earlier, but what's it mean to bring a local guy back here, and what's unique about his skill set? Yeah, I mean, so. Uh, Keeping our hometown, hometown guys here, or to be able to bring the, the, the talent that at one point in time chose to go elsewhere but now see value in coming back home, I think speaks to, again, the, the job that the staff has done, the buzz and the excitement and the opportunity that kids realize that are right here, right? Like, 
being able to do something in your backyard and to go through the adversity, to go through the, the sacrifices, to go through everything that's required to, to play this game at this highest level and then be able to do it close to your family, close to your home and share those moments, I think is something truly special, right? And so it's one thing to say that and you know to ask for uh, faith on you know the, the, the first day on the job in the press conference, hey, we're gonna do this and keep the hometown heroes here, right? Now there's some proof of concept in that that, hey, this is a place that, that guys want to be. And so for the high school kids, the 25s and the 26s, as, as we've gotten them to campus here early on in the process, you know, they, they've always known how special this place is. And now in all phases, it becomes a very real option, a very real possibility for them, right? And, and, and I think Tano's skill set in particular, like yesterday he's in the, the weight room, you know, and, and he's throwing around 275 on the bench, but yet still has the speed and athleticism to, to play in space, right, and do those things. So he's got this rare combination for an inside linebacker and, and a mid skill, right, to where you need to be violent and explosive at the point of attack, yet fluid in space. Um, and, and he has that, that unique combina combination of size, speed, strength that you're looking for. And now again, it's a matter of how does that all translate when the pads come on? And so can he process and, and diagnose and play with instinct to get to where he needs to be and show up and arrive with, with bad intentions when he gets there? Jerry Kluber is another guy that uh, you guys were able to land, local kid. Uh, yeah. What about his skill set that, that you like that set the helps? Yeah, I mean, he can run, run, right? And he's got some great ball skills, um, really fluid in space. And I think the thing that's really exciting about Jerry is that he hasn't been playing the position for very long, right? He's got a unique backstory to where he, he picked up the game, you know, later in his journey, later in his high school track. So to me, he's, he's very raw and he has a super high ceiling. And he's been very attentive to, you know, learn and to grow and to pour into his craft. Um, so I think just a tremendously high ceiling there um, with a great skill set in terms of length and the speed. Um, so excited to get on the grass with him. What, what was it like, Coach, to be able to get uh, Mike Schmidt, who's obviously got a lot of experience in San Diego State, yeah. back, obviously, to change in the coaching staff? Yeah. How, how did that come about? Obviously, there's some familiarity with Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's funny when I initially got the job, there's obviously a ton of people that are excited for you and everyone has an opinion about, you know, what's best and what you should do. Um, but with my connection with Coach Babers and everything, right, like, you know, hit, hit, Mike's name came up initially as we were moving this way. And obviously, Coach O'Boyle got a great opportunity to go to Northwestern and so happy for him in that regard. But, you know, through every uh, perceived challenge where, hey, you think you got the staff whole and, and in place, right, there, there again is that that opportunity to, to grow and to get better. And, and so to be able to bring Mike back home for the unique fit within this role, um, again, I mean, he's a hometown hero in a different way, right? And so, I mean, shoot, we've been out on the road a couple days together and it's amazing. I mean, you, you think his next career might be able to be running for mayor, right? Because he's gonna be able to uh, collect some votes in that regard. Um, but, you know, again, just, he has a, a wealth of experience. You know, he, he was able to grow as a coach in the SEC last year and then come back here now and be able to pour into our kids with that, you know, knowledge and again to blend our ideas, his run game concepts and you know, with what we've been able to do uh, in the past, it's gonna be fun to really kind of get in the lab and create some new concepts collectively together about how we can attack defenses. Can you sure. take us through just this period of time for your program? Like the, this is what like a strength and conditioning period yeah. of time and then you'll flip over to like spring football. What what mm -hmm. are the priorities now for like this entire group as they get ready for spring? Yeah, so we're in the middle of phase one. Like I know, you know, you, Coach Sobel has talked about a couple times and everything. Um, but for this winter conditioning phase, right, top of mind for us is establishing the culture, right, getting uh, our size and strength to where it needs to be in the weight room. And literally starting here in about an hour, you know, we'll take, take a deeper dive into the installations of the offense and, and the defensive scheme so we can get on the field and maximize this walkthrough time. So we're really laying the foundation for what this 2024 team is, is going to look like, right? From a cultural standpoint, hey, here, here's how we want to do things. Here's how we're going to talk about things. Here's the non-negotiables. Here's our core beliefs. And we'll install our culture in much the same way that we install our offensive and defensive schemes, right? And then we'll be able to dive deeper into, hey, this is what we call our two by two formation. This is what we call our three by one formation. This is what the signals look like. So that by the time we get to spring ball, we can really invest the time that's needed and maximize the 15 practice opportunities that we have um, to, to really have as much growth as possible during that time. Um, but that's kind of where we're at right now with everything. What is the challenge like to install something radically different than these kids have ever had before? Because I've looked at your video and I know what you're running and it's, it's wild, but that's foreign to them. Yeah, but it's new and it's exciting. It's, 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 it's 
it's exciting. The kids are hungry. Um, you can tell that there's a, there's a very real appetite for it. Um, but the kids don't know what they don't know right now. You know, like, like they all think right now that they want to play fast and then we're going to hit spring ball and to play at the pace of play that we do, you have to train at a certain kind of way in that regard, right? And, and so they're learning that a little bit right now in the weight room, but it's going to be something completely different when we put the ball down and, you know, run a, a 15 minute seven on seven period in practice and we get over 40 plays in that 15 minutes, right? And that means everyone's working, everyone's rolling, everyone's going. So there's a whole holistic change and a lifestyle that needs to be, um, you know, committed to, to, to play this way. But the guys are hungry. And I mean, they're constantly up here getting a peek at extra tape and doing some different things all on their own because they're, they're eager to learn. And, uh, you know, let me shoot the young people. They just want to be put in the best position to be successful with it all. And I think a lot of guys, you know, are, are tremendously excited about the opportunity that is being presented to them to where they know that there's going to be a lot of opportunity in all three phases to go make plays. How many kids do you have here that early enrollees, either transfers, JUCOs, or the high school kids? How many are downstairs? Right now, we actually we have 104 active kids on the roster right now. So I mean, when we're lifting, we got two lifting groups that are over 50, you know, 50 guys deep. I mean, so it's the most kids out of any roster that I've ever been a part of because of all the different opportunities to, you know, replace bodies and do things like that. To where we have literally the most number of team number of players on the team right now than any other spot that I've been at this time of year. Can you talk about Duffy and can you talk about uh, the Indianapolis quarterback O'Neal? I can. But what in particular would you like to know about? I mean they're both very, very talented. They're they're here. They're they're gym rats. They're 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 eager to uh, you know build relationships with their wide receivers and, and connections with them. They're really, really smart kids. Um, you know, both come from you know, AJ played for his dad, who's a high school coach, and so he's grown up around the game. Uh, Danny O'Neill played for one of the top premier programs in Indianapolis, so winning for both of those kids is a, uh, you know, is a, is a premium and it's a priority. And so they understand what level of work is required to, to win and to be successful at the levels that they're chasing. Would your hope be to identify and name your starting quarterback coming out of the spring? Uh, Ideally, you want to get that done as soon as possible, but I'm not going to rush to, to, to do that just to, you know, set that and, and, and to, to, to get it done, right? But by the time we get into, you know, the, 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 the meat of the prep as we move through the season, we need to know who our guy is, right? Coach, you talked about running 40 plays in 15 minutes from the player standpoint. How about from the fan standpoint? San Diego State fans are not used to that. Any advice for fans on what they can expect when they're actually watching this type of offense? Yeah, get there early, get your refreshments from the concession stand and get your butts in your seat so you can see the game so you don't miss anything. <laughs> but I mean, it's gonna be fast paced, it's gonna be explosive, it's gonna be exciting, yet it's still gonna be disciplined and it's still gonna be tough, right? We're not gonna lose that blue collarness and that toughness um, about who we are and what we're about and, and being able to roll up our sleeves and, and win the game in a lot of different ways. But yeah, get there early, get, get your popcorn or whatever it is that you know you enjoy while you watch the ball game and then get in the seats. I know there's a lot of fun entertainment areas that you can hang out at at Snapdragon, but do that before the game and then get, your, get in your seats and be quiet while we're on offense and be really, really loud while we're on defense. Is that the pitch when you recruit receivers? Is that the pitch because I mean, Classic football is run, 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 run. I don't know sure. if receivers want to block. I mean, some receivers have passed the numbers in the 90s. Yeah. Um, is that kind of the pitch to receivers in this? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we've been very fortunate, uh, you know, with the number of wide receivers that we've had in the past decade of, of running this system. I mean, we've had years where you have multiple receivers that have over 1,000 yards receiving. I mean, there's been years where, you know, one receiver has 1,500 yards and over 15 touchdowns, and the receiver opposite of him has another 1,000 yards with 10, touch, 10 touchdowns, right? So, you know, again, like, Receivers want to go to a place where they're going to get touches, where they're going to have opportunities to impact the scoreboard. And again, with the number of plays that we're getting and the number of receivers that we distribute on any given play, there's opportunity, right? And then with opportunity, the, the guys are able to maximize that. And so, you know, we kind of just, again, it, it's, there's proof of concept. Hey, we've taken guys that are similar to your skill set. Like, shoot, just this past weekend, Heath was here with his family, right? And you can turn Heath's tape on, and he can run, run. I mean, he's a 10, 400 meter guy, right? And, and right around 5'10, really good skill set. And so we sat in my office at the end of his visit, and I was like, you remind me a lot of this kid named Scotty Miller, right, that I recruited at Bowling Green. And so you have those comparisons to where guys can look at other players that have entrusted us with their career that we've been able to pour into. And now Scotty's on his second, if not third, contract with the Falcons in the NFL, right? And so he then is like, oh, 
that was one of your guys? Like, yeah, absolutely. Like, actually, there's a jersey that he sent me that's signed, right? And I see the same thing in you that I saw in him. So let's make this thing happen. Because ultimately, that's what all these kids who signed with us are saying, right? Besides anything else is that, you know, hey, all the hard work, the family, again, the dedication, the sacrifice, the getting up early and going to practices and traveling far and wide, what they're telling us by signing with us is that they're entrusting us with their careers. And this is the last spot, if we do it right, that they're selecting to maximize these last four or five years of playing ball. And then we have to work collectively together at a really freaking high level so that they can earn the right to go play some more ball. And that's something that we don't take lightly, right? That by you entrusting us with that, Man, that, that gives you some energy, that gives you some passion, right? that gives you some fuel every, each and every single day to show up and be your best self for these kids so that they can have a tremendous opportunity. Have you found a good defensive line coach? Yeah, it'll, it'll work itself out here through the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Sean, so many uh, accomplished and veteran coaches are leaving college football right now because of the change. In the sure. I'm sure you've talked a lot about how you embrace that change. So personally, I'm wondering, do you feel like you're kind of like right place, right time? and you can work some of these other coaches that maybe struggle to grasp this, you can really succeed and this would be a, a, kind of a weapon for you. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know why other guys are doing what they're doing. You know, I haven't been fortunate to, to talk to those guys and, and, and why they're making the choices that they're making at their, their, their journey. Um, but I mean, shoot. <laughs> The same way that these young men have made uh, sacrifices and, and decisions to be where they are, like I've done the same, and I'm in this thing, you know, and I'm very, very excited to be in it and, and feel like we have everything that we need to be successful right here at San Diego State. And, and, and I'm excited to see where we can take this as the landscape of college football is changing as well. But heck yeah, I, I embrace all the opportunities and all the perceived challenges that are out there. Like it's what we signed up for. So I'm not going to boo hoo about that. Like it doesn't do any good. Let's go find a way to make this great. And again, every single one of our coaches, every single one of our players, you know, has that mindset. And, and to me, I just look around each and every single day, you know, that there's, there's so much room for growth. There's so much room for opportunity for us to continue to grow and, and get better. And I don't think there's very many places that are positioned better than we are right now to, to seize where we're at in time. Are there three or four things in particular that you guys need to identify in spring? Who our quarterback is, how our kids learn, and teaching and establishing them what it looks like, what, the, what, it, what is the standard of what the tape looks like when no one's talking when we turn it on, if that makes sense, right? Like the tape when you turn it on should speak. And so the guys need to know and understand what is good, what is great, what is elite, so that when we turn the tape on and other people see it, our tape does the talking uh, for us, right? And then, again, as we learn our kids, we need to know and understand what's the best way to teach them. Because at the end of the day, that's our job, right? So they're more than capable. They have more than enough ability. We have to do a great job as leaders serving them in the way that best suits them so that they can be in position to have the most success. And then, again, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, my son Rory's, team up in Poway is flag football here getting cranked up a little flag football right like his team better have a quarterback and our team better have a quarterback and the team that wins on Sunday their quarterback better play well so we got to figure out who the quarterback's going to be. Sean the dynamics of Kent State and all the success what did you learn from that and what did you learn from the setbacks of Colorado when you had a great start and then it all seemed to caught, catch up to you are you a different X and O's mental coach now based on those experiences? Yeah, I think you grow through it all, right? I mean, to, to where the, the biggest thing at Kent State was that, you, you, again, you find solutions as you move through it all. Your, your personnel is going to change and evolve. And again, the strengths of what each player does year in and year out is going to be a little bit different. But there's, there's a way to win each and every single football game. And it's our job as coaches as we put together the specific game plan to figure out how we win that game that week and be loyal to that as we move through it. Um, in terms of, you know, again, last year at, at Colorado, uh, I think every single one of those weeks there was an opportunity to grow, there was an opportunity to improve, and I was able to learn a, as a coach, you know, about how focused we were at the beginning of the year and, and how important it is that, you know, as you win and as you grow, you know, how you need to heighten up your, your focus and have laser focus on, on the process and, and constantly, you know, be a, about the process and, and not let the end results, you know, kind of validate, you know, how you got there at the, at the end of the day. Um, so, yeah, t tons of opportunity, tons of growth. And, yeah, to say that I'm the same person that I was in 2018 as a rookie head coach as I am now is, you know, yeah, I'm vastly different because of the experiences that I've had. So many new coaches in this conference now with all the veteran guys having exited right at the end of the season. 
Is your scheme impossible for somebody to learn how to defend in one week's time? Is, your, is it scheme plus skill that makes what you've done successful? Yeah, I think, again, it goes back to culture and talent first and foremost, right? Like, culture drives execution, right? So no matter what the call is, offensively, defensively, or special teams-wise, if our culture is not right, we're not going to be able to execute at a high enough level that we want to. There's not a coach on the planet that's a good coach unless he has good players. So you need the right players in place. And it's your job as a coach, again, to put them in the best possible position to do what they do best. And then the scheme element of it, you know, there's really, really good coaches in this league. So to say it's impossible to defend, no. There's, there's ways that you can slow it down. But again, that's where the, the individual mindset of each player and the collective whole of the unit on that given play need to do a much better job of, of executing so that you can have success majority of the time. Um, you know, it, it's not going to be perfect. And, you know, but again, you see through it and you have talented people that find a way to, to have success on each individual play. And again, you do that the majority of the time, you're going to be all right. There's a lot of veterans coming back, but is every job open and has to be uh, reclaimed in the spring? Every job every year will be open, right? Like at the end of each and every single season, we have to replace every single guy that's in the room. And we're going to do that either one or two ways, right? Like it's going to be with a better version of that same player next year because they've grown and they've developed through the phases of the year leading up to it, or it's going to be because of an infusion of talent from the outside, right? But it's the same thing for me. Like I need to show up tomorrow as a better head coach than I am today. And the goal better be that tomorrow I'm, I'm, I'm better today, right? So that, that constant improvement throughout. Um, so yeah, everything's going to be earned, right? Like, and again, that, that speaks to life. Not anything of value is not just handed to you, right? Like this, this opportunity wasn't just handed to me. Whoever the starting quarterback is going to be, it's not just going to be handed to him. Like it, it's got to be earned through hard work, through sacrifice. And uh, again, that's what this great game teaches so that, hey, you want to be a great husband? Like, Go earn the right to be called a great husband, right? By being present and showing up. You want to be a great father? Like, you got to be intentional in that role and do things even though you don't feel like doing them at times. Like, I love my kids to death, but, you know, there, there's times where as they continue to grow, like, like all right, <laughs> I, I see you there, bud. You know, right? But I love them unconditionally, right? But it doesn't mean that I always feel like, right, showing up in that moment all the time. But you've made the choice. So you got to go earn that each and every single time. Absolutely. Have you settled on a particular date yet for the spring game? April 20th. Yep, that's Saturday, April 20th. Mm -hmm. This might be a shot in the dark before you even got here, but Carl Weathers obviously uh, passed last week. And yeah. What does he mean just to the program and the guy who's kind of been there, done that, and then moved on to bigger things and, and what the school could provide? Yeah, I mean, I think it just speaks to, right, the opportunities that can be created here, right, to, to, to play the game here at a high level, to, to be around great people. And then from this great university, you can go and achieve wonderful things. You don't need to go anywhere else for it, right? So, you know, obviously, um, you know, remorseful time with his passing, but celebration of his life and all that he accomplished. And, and again, you can do that as an Aztec. And once an Aztec, always an Aztec, right? Were you disappointed 22 kids went to the transfer portal never gave you a chance to have you show them what spring ball and this package would be? No. They made choices. We, we sat down and I talked with the majority of them. But again, as I alluded to early on, like if Bill Belichick got this job, I think some guys have made decisions based on, you know, multiple factors that were important to them. So no, I wasn't disappointed about that. Anything else for Coach? Cool. Thanks, guys.